Welcome to a couple of Rad Techs podcasts where we bring you an inside look at the world of radiology from the unique perspective of a married couple of radiologic technologists. Together, we have years of experience, exactly 30 years in the field, and we are here to demystify the science of medical imaging. Radiology is the unsung hero of the medical field, providing doctors with crucial images and information that help diagnose and treat illnesses. Join us as we explore the latest techniques, technologies, and innovations in radiology and discover the vital role we play in the healthcare industry. So come along for the ride as we share our passion for radiology as a married couple. Welcome to A Couple of Rad Techs. I'm going live and we're going to talk about busting myths in radiology. We hear things all the time about, do you guys just press buttons? Do I get radiated with the MRI? Well, we're going to talk over. Let me know if you are watching live what questions you have. My name is Chandria and I am a registered radiologic technologist. I'll even explain what that is because some people wonder like, What's the difference between an x-ray technologist and a registered radiologic technologist? A lot of people can't even say it, so don't worry. We're going to practice that today, too. So let's get right into it. And number one myth is MRI, MRI machines use harmful radiation. Well, that is not true. In MRI, we actually use magnets. And the magnets use radio waves. That's it. No ionizing radiation. You're probably thinking of x-rays, CAT scans, that uses radiation, which can be harmful if given in large doses over long periods of time. But in honesty, you actually get more radiation from the atmosphere. Our bodies give off ionizing radiation and so many other things around us. And uh, I don't have it because I'm talking on it. Cell phones is one of those things where we actually get radiation from. And you know, we've got earbuds, we got Apple watches, we've got all type of things that produce radiation that is harmful to our bodies. So with MRI machines, you're not getting any harmful radiation. That is like one of the biggest things I get. I get patients all the time saying, wait a second, how much radiation am I getting with this MRI scan? And because I also do CAT scans or CT scans, I do administer radiation when I do CAT scans, but I'm able to help people to see that during MRI scans, you're not getting any ionizing radiation. So you're safe. Now we do have to take precautions with MRI scans, even though we're not giving radiation. We have big magnets, which can be very harmful to people if the wrong thing is brought into the MRI scan room. If a patient is let in with the implant that is not MRI safe, we've got to make sure we still stay safe, even though it's not radiation. There are more things in radiology that we have to be careful of when it comes to safety than radiation. So be sure to let your technologist know if you have any implants in your body. If you weren't born with it, let them know, please, because we need to know, because there are a few things that can harm you with the MRI. If you have a, if you have a pain patch, if you have a medication patch, a nicotine patch, any of those patches can actually burn your skin. So we have to make sure that we know that they are on you. So when people tell you that another thing is when people tell you that they've had an MRI scan with certain metals on their body, all metal is not created equal. It depends on the metal. It depends on a lot of physics of the scanner, uh, where the ISO center or the center of the magnet is. There are certain points on the magnet that are actually more powerful than just maybe the area you're standing in. So all of those things are important. So not just radiation. Myth number two, Radiologic technologists just press buttons. We get that all the time, and that is so far from the truth. We do press buttons, and in some professions in medical imaging, we don't press buttons. So it kind of depends on what profession in medical imaging you're doing. Did you know there are over 11 modalities in medical imaging? It's called medical imaging. I don't know if you know this. This is a fun fact because it encompasses so many professions, not just x-ray or MRI or CT. It actually has 11 professions and I'm going to just run through them really quick. Let me know if you knew these. You have x-ray, which is diagnostic x-ray. You have MRI, you have CT, nuclear medicine, radiation therapy, radiologist assistant, ultrasound or sonography, bone density, interventional radiologic technologist, I'm missing something else, mammography technologist, 
And oh my goodness, I, I think I got everything. I feel like I'm missing one and I am. I'll come back with it at the end, Cardi. I'm missing one more, y'all. I'm gonna come back with it. But we've got 11 professions in radiology. And in those professions or specialties, we have extra things that fall up under those. So they're like subcategories to those specialties that you can do. And then you can go into sales, clinical applications, education, administration, research. You can even work on a veterinarian side of radiology. You don't always have to work with humans. That's really neat. I've never done that and I've always wanted to. Myth number three, MRI scans are dangerous. We kind of covered that in myth number one. They are dangerous, but they're not dangerous. They're not dangerous on the radiation side, but they are generally safe and non-invasive, but no long-term effects from it. Like ionizing radiation, people, you know, you do harmful radiation given to patient's body, you do do some damage. But with MRIs, it's just radio waves. So really no long-term damage. It might be a little ear noise, irritation. So we make sure that you have earplugs in your ears. If you would like music, you also can have music going on. So that is myth three. I kind of covered that in myth one. Number four, radiology results are always immediate. No, not always. So radiologists actually are the doctors that interpret the MRI scans. We as the radiologic technologists and subspecialties, we take the exams. We actually do the exams, but we have a doctor. Just like a nurse doesn't do everything in medical, you have surgical techs, you have re re respiratory therapy, you have radiology. You have doctors that specialize, like you just don't have a family doctor, you have a gastroenterologist, you have a um, ophthalmologist, you have a, um, a OBGYN, and you have a radiologist. So you have a doctor that specifically reads and performs medical imaging procedures along with us, the technologist. And that's pretty much it. They are the ones that dictate and read the reports. Now, we do have a specialty of radiologist assistants that have been trained to read certain images and certain scans along with the radiologist. They don't read all of them. They read some of them along with the radiologist. But for the most part, the radiologist reads all the exams. Now, can you get immediate results? Yes, you can. Sometimes they are going to be stacked. And that is when you get an automatic reading from the radiologist. But again, the technologist never gives that. If it's a stat report, we ask that the patient wait around and the doctor actually sends in a report and calls their doctor who ordered the scan. That doctor then calls their patient and talks to their patient about the results. That's pretty much it. Number five. Pregnant women cannot have imaging tests. I actually just did a video on this talking about can you get an MRI scan if you're pregnant? That is a myth you can. You, it's, it's a myth that you can't. A long time ago, we did not do routinely do scans on pregnant women. There was not enough data that suggested if it was harmful, if it wasn't harmful. So far, there's enough data. MRI scans were not done as much as they are done now. Like they order them like Ooh, oh my goodness, I get McDonald's now. But that wasn't always the case. They were very specific. They usually didn't have staff past five o'clock when I first started at MRI. So it wasn't staffed past five o'clock, so there were no emergent scans, nobody waiting around all night to do emergency MRIs. So you just did not have uh, a lot of women that needed to get an MRI because most of the time with MRI, which is different, you know what the issue is. So you know there's a hemangioma on the liver. You know that there is some kind of tear in the knee. So then you do the MRI to get better detail. That is what MRI, CAT scans, people just complain of abdominal pain. Now we do a CAT scan to kind of search and see what the abdominal pain is. We do an x-ray to see why they're having shortness of breath. You don't do that for an MRI. You know what, usually know what you're going in for. If somebody said they got abdominal pain, they're not gonna send them to get an MRI. It's very specific to what is already known. Uh, and then we get better detail or clarity on what they already know. That's how they use MRI most of, life, most of the time. So number six, all scans are the same. MRI scans can be tailored to look at different parts of the body and specific conditions. 
that kind of goes into number five as well. So MRIs, when it comes to MRIs, we look at the bone, we can null out. We can like null or remove fat. We can know or remove bone, tissues, different things, and we can get, we can only see fluid, we can see tissue, we can kind of do different things with the magnets and manipulate the magnets along with the hydrogen molecules of the body to be able to get to see certain tissues. We can use certain parameters and protocols that we plug into the machine and use that along with the hydrogen molecules in the body, uh, even being able to know out whatever we want to kind of get a different kind of, a, or use a different gradient, different piece of the magnet to be able to get different types of imaging, to be able to see more clearly. That is the beautiful thing about MRI. Uh, number seven, myth. Radiologic technologists don't need to understand anatomy. I actually saw that on one of my TikToks. Someone said, oh, you don't need to know anatomy. Oh, uh, yeah, you do. <laughs> uh, yes, you do. If you do not know anatomy, you're not going to know what you're taking a picture of. I, we don't just say take a picture of the hand. When I, I, I just recently did an MRI and it was of a tendon, a specific tendon. Now, I don't know all the tendons by heart, but you know what? I knew that I wasn't looking at just the bones or a fracture. I knew this was a tendon. So you have to kind of look up where this tendon is, or the doctor may say it's in the third MCP. If you don't know what the MCP is, or the PCP, or the ICP, or the ACP, or the PIP, if you don't know what those things are, which means you don't know your anatomy, you're going to be either too superior or too inferior and totally miss the whole thing. You must know your anatomy, period, if you work in healthcare, but especially when we're looking in medical imaging, we are looking specifically at anatomical parts, pathology. We have to know our pathology, our anatomy, in order to be able to take images of people. It's just necessary. There's no way around it. So when I heard that, I was like, whoo, totally wrong. You're misleading people. So if you want to get into radiology, I don't care what facet you're getting into, you have to know anatomy. For me, it was something I enjoyed. I was very strong at anatomy, the technical side of it. I was fine at the book side. Uh, took out to that radiation biology and that physics. Whew, took every brain cell in my head to study <laughs> and understand that. And now I'm, I'm back in school, too. Once I finish, then I'll tell y'all. But whew, I'm back in school. And it's taking every brain cell as well. I tell you, I took a little break during the pandemic and kind of moved these cobwebs, cobwebs up out of my brain. How, do you guys feel like that sometimes? I know I do. You just got to keep the brain going. Myth number eight, MRI scans can see everything in the body. It does have limitations. It cannot detect all deformities. It is limited. So we don't use MRI for everything. That's why we have so many different modalities and specialties. Ultrasound is great for certain things. I mean, ultrasound can really get in there and see things we can, and we need a little more detail. Now you can go over to one of the other specialties. And if you know what you're looking at to be able to treat certain diseases and cancers and things, this is where nuclear medicine comes in. This is where radiation therapy comes in, PET, all of them. And then they also work in conjunction together because you have MRI working with PET now. You have nuclear medicine and PET and CT all working together. It's just beautiful. Oh my goodness. Number nine, children can't have MRIs. Total myth. Total myth, let me tell you. One of my favorite jobs was working in a pediatric hospital. Oh my goodness, I had so much fun working there. I learned so much, especially about anatomy because pediatric and children's anatomy is so different from anatomy just of adults. They have growth plates because their bones are not finished growing. So it, sometimes it looks like their bodies aren't even attached, especially at the joints because those joints is where they grow. They have growth plates there, so they're growing. So it's like, oh my goodness, like those looks like little floating bones all there in their wrists, like nothing's even attached. <laughs> Uh, or their heads, you know, it's just so interesting to see the little, you know, sutures and stuff in the head where the, brain, the skull has not, um, I can't think of the word I'm trying, fused yet. So just uh, MRI, children can, anybody can get an MRI. We MRI anything. They MRI fruits, y'all. Anything with hydrogen in it can be MRI. Just know that. Hydrogen molecules is water and magnets work together. X-rays, anybody, anything can get an X-ray. Yep. So lastly, our 10th myth. You guys have stuck with me this far. Thank you so much. Be sure to subscribe. Give me a like. Give me a subscribe. I appreciate it. And don't forget to check out 
these things here, any different videos. I have a podcast as well. I'd love for you to check that out. So number 10, radiology is only used for diagnosing broken bones. Oh, this drives me crazy. No, it is not. Broken bones is, yes, one of the things we use medical imaging for, specifically x-ray, but we use all the modalities to look at the broken bones and more. I just talked about PET scan, nuclear medicine scan. Let me tell you about bone density. Bone density is used to help women who are in a menopausal stage or perimenopausal stage to measure their bones over time and hopefully be able to catch before they start shrinking because women start to shrink as they go into menopause as far as height, which equals them having a greater chance of having fractures in their spine and in their body, all of their bones. If they don't measure, uh, if you start to see women shrink through getting these bone density scans, and they usually get them when they get their mammograms, uh, when they get their female test, they'll get a bone density test at a certain age, and that is when the doctor starts to watch and say, well, who wait, you were 5'10 last year, and now you're 5'7. That's a problem. We need to start getting some treatment, getting things going. This is how important medical imaging is to everyone. And then we also do MRIs on prostate. So if you are a man and you go get your blood work done and it shows inflammation in the prostate or your PSA levels are off, that blood work tells the doctor something needs to be done. What we usually do to really get a good look is we have modalities we can use. The doctor would determine which medical imaging modality would be best suited. A lot of times it's MRI. I can't tell you, one year I worked at a hospital, not one year, several years, and I did like prostates all day long, prostate MRIs all day long. And they're not hard, they're not, but they're uncomfortable <laughs> for men uh, many times, but they are really detailed and really good, and they're just not for prostate cancer. They are, anytime you have inflammation in the prostate, sometimes people, men can just have inflamed prostates. That's not good either. Why? Anytime something inflames, there's a problem. So our MRI gets in there and gets to see detail. And then the doctor can be able to treat the patient or put them on a watch and be able to reduce that by different methods. And they can also get in there and see, is this cancerous? Uh, many times we have patients that come in, they're complaining of like a, a, a growing pain and, or like a hernia. And a lot of times you think it, the doctor thinks that it's a hernia in a male down in a growing area. Turns out, when we take that scan, excuse me, take that scan because they were complaining of the groin area, we're thinking hernia, we actually see testicular cancer. And then they, we found that and they've been able to go get treatment. Now, if they've had testicular pain or things like that, but sometimes they're having pain inside the groin and it's not on the testicles. Many times people feel a lump. So what do they do? They go get a, a mammogram. They go get an ultrasound. They're able to get exams that can image the body outside of broken bones. I worked in a cancer center for many years and I was able to work with patients who came back every six months after they got through their treatment of cancer and they had succeeded, but they still had to come back for the first five years, every six months, every year for some, and get a routine CT scan. Some people, chest, abdomen, pelvis, it just depended on what their doctor wanted to look at for them and what type of cancer they had to keep a watch on it. And some might just get an abdomen, some might just get an abdomen pelvis, some just may get a chest because cancer sometimes metastasizes back to those areas. So we do medical imaging on all body parts for many different reasons, not just broken bones. And that is why I created this page of a couple of rad texts. So be sure, thank you for subscribing, thank you for joining me for this debunking 10 myths about radiologic technology. Come back for more. Be sure to binge watch any of my videos and subscribe, follow, and I'd love for you to give me any suggestions on what you'd like to learn about medical imaging and radiology. Until next time. I hope you enjoyed this podcast today. Thank you so much for listening. This is just one of the many free resources I offer to my clients to dump unhealthy habits and begin living. Be sure to visit my website for more free resources and health coaching. Again, thank you for listening. Be sure to subscribe, leave a review, and share this podcast with others so they can join the Let's Chit Chat podcast. Have a great day, you guys. See you next episode.